and call the spaceship to the heaven port, prepare for the energy, and interface with the couch in space. Uh, welcome to Space Couch, new setup, because we have our first in-studio guest. I'm very excited about that. You may remember him from the very first episode of Reverse Space Couch with my buddy Phil. Phil, how's it going? Oh, it's going, it's going. Just awesome. Uh, awesome, man. Well, give me one second, and we'll then, because like, we gotta, we got to uh, pay some space bills and uh, keep the space lights on. So we will do a little advertising. Advertisements we brought to you by Liger Hawk. Records, you want to check out the brand new uh, uh, How Can the Crow Be Real if Birds Aren't Real from Dot Exorcist. The best of Tommy Tantrum from New Sighting Tommy Tantrum, it's so good. Plus 310 Dick Light from 8 Bit Panda Strike. Uh, then we got Decade Decoded from the wonderful James Netterwald, followed by Invictus, his self titled EP Invictus. It's so good. You want to then check out Interfaced from Dot Exorcist, who's just been on a tear lately. Oi, bro, show me into bit, also from Dot Exorcist, followed by Enter the Octagons, our first compilation, um, and the strongification of Trent Reser from Deep Pennsylvania, uh, or something like that, from Dot Exorcist, who's just been on fire. Also, this is so exciting. The show is brought to you by Super 7. Uh, I screwed up the reality of the world. Uh, Super 7. Uh, uh, they're the best toys around. If you're going to pick something up, go to super7.com slash space couch show. That's super7.com slash space couch show. I just picked up this wonderful Snake Eyes. Uh, they do these these reissues of classics. And I never had Snake Eyes as a kid, so I finally got him as, as an adult. And so check that out at super7.com slash space couch show. Okay, now we will continue in the grand tradition. Um, I don't know if it's a tradition, but you've done it before. So it's, it's this idea of uh, having Phil for River Space Couch. Um, so uh, the the space floor is, is yours, man. All right. Well, I mean, as I feel pretty much anybody that's going to be watching, listening to this right now knows there's been a a little bit of craziness going on on your end, and um, just wasn't sure if there was anything that you uh, may not have already touched on recently, or maybe just. Um, wanna... Yeah, no, that's that's a good way to start, I think, because it's like this fucking thing just keeps going, and so it's like every time I've, I've addressed this, uh, you know, on a show or a podcast or whatever. Um, it's obviously just the snapshot in time, and then just more keeps happening. So, yeah, there, lately there's this, there's been this phenomenon of, um, like, people that I've worked with, or you know, whose names appear in the, the liner notes of that last gasoline album, mm -hmm. like they're getting, like a lot of blowback and that's that's really what's the word I'm looking for disheartening because it's like it's like one thing if you like categorically categorically wreck my life but it's like then you gotta go after a guy because he mastered a song for me like what the fuck man you people are bloodthirsty so it just the 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 scope of um scope's not even the right word thoroughness of what i just refer to as the cancellation you mm -hmm. know with 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 the c it's just it's just mind-boggling sometimes like don't you guys have like day jobs and families and shit like something, something but um yeah, the, the the third party uh, fallout has, has, has sort of been the latest thing that I've just been like, wow, this is fucking gnarly. Um, yeah, the, the 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 overt attacks have sort of died down, but. Uh, I don't know, like, I, I made a really, like, 
I've been pretty good, I think, in terms of like, uh, like uh, not breaking and being stalwart. But I, I crumble, you know, pretty much every weekend. And um, I made some sad, like, you know, I want to die type post, and uh, like enemies were laughing at it. Like, Jesus Christ, you guys are vicious. Um, but uh, the 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 going after my like four friends is like, wow. So that's that's been kind of the latest thing. Yeah. So is it safe to assume like all of that is kind of what led into? And I apologize if you've already maybe posted about this no, or talked about this, but. Um, into uh, transition, I guess, if you will, from Tiger Hawk to Lager Hawk. Uh, I feel it's safe to assume that that may have kind of... Yeah, yeah. Um, so Tiger Squawk... Or Tiger Squawk, I'm sorry. It's, I mean, well, that's, <laughs> that's the... No, that's, that's the perp. That's why I called it Lager Hawk. Because it was close. Because it was close. Um, I got, like, lit up so hard as this this supposed um transphobe or whatever like i was like so radioactively like um poisonous i like i lost all my friends and um you know i i did if you're unfamiliar there at home i i built up this label from the ground up into like the really a family and uh just sort of as the face of that i was like i'm i'm like hurting everyone on mm -hmm. this label now so i'm just gonna step down uh i gave it to a friend of mine because i didn't want to i didn't want my stink sort of washing over anybody else and uh that I guess all those guys hate me now, which like I tried to I tried to do the thing that was best for everyone. And then so sort of as a joke, um not sort of like very really, explicitly you know, yeah. as as a joke, I um uh there's a when when you submit songs or albums in this case for um consideration on the dock the deutsche alternative charts the german mm -hmm. alternative charts there's a slot for a record label so this is like liger hawk not tiger squawk get yeah. it haha -ha. that, that was the whole thing just mm -hmm. like just because it was just because i was i was like what the fuck ever like um i'm just kind of making fun of myself and then exactly the same thing happened as with Tiger Squawk, where it was, it was supposed to be this joke, like Tiger Squawk comes from a line in, ironically, a caustical song. And it's just, it's a description of my voice, like, because I'm just like screaming. And um, people were like, hey, can I be on your label? I'm like, if you want, man. I'm like, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we, we started going and, uh, uh, picked up 8-Bit Panda Strike and that led to James Netterwald and it's just like, it was sort of the catalyst, uh, for like Dot Exorcist to really start dropping um I'm, I'm drinking seltzer so I'm a little gassy uh stuff and it's 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 coming along it's like that's like kind of one of my best things right now um working on here's a space couch exclusive we're working on our first online show um so that'll be really exciting but we put out a compilation so yeah liger hawk was sort of it's Tiger Squawk 2. Mm -hmm. um, and now some of those Tiger Squawk artists are coming over to Liger Hawk. Like, I set up my own label rival. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Like, ti <laughs> Tiger Squawk's not around anymore. But it basically, the, the to sort of summarize it, like, I walked away from that because I didn't want to, like, 
get any, give anybody my radiation sickness and started this other thing. Um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? A, a fresh, like this is what I am. And if you're still willing to work with me, given all this furor, you know, mm-hmm. uh, just trying to be transparent about it, but, um, no, it's going really well, man. Like it, uh, this new, I don't want to say signing because I don't give anybody a contract. Yeah. But uh, this guy, Tommy Tandrum, like, it's amazing. Like, it's, 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 it's really, it was Spew, we signed a punk band. Like, uh, I can, I could not be happier with the way that's going right now. Yeah, because honestly, um, I was waiting for my flight. Uh, what day was that? Uh, Thursday. And I saw one of the Lagerhawk posts talking about Tommy. So I was like, well, while I'm yeah. waiting, let me just sit and click and listen. And I just so have it in my head and I'm associated more with, you know, the industrial and the yeah. things like that. And I was like, well, this is a little different. Than yeah. That. Like, this isn't bad, but I was like, okay, Brian, all right. Yeah. <laughs> branching it out a little bit, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, uh, well, on one end, like, what am I going to say? No, you can't be on my no, no, label. Yeah. But, uh, but for Tommy Tantrum, I was like, you know, all right, this weird, like, sad parlor music. I don't know, like, doo, 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 doo. Yeah. like, hell yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and like, like, uh, Spew, the punk band, like, their songs are about, like, pro wrestling and shit. Yeah, hell yeah. So, I mean, well, Stag Beagle Professional Wrestling. Yes, yeah. I mean, else to say right there, you know? Well so. done. <laughs> yeah. I am. Uh, I, I I am admittedly not a, a, a pro wrestling um, person, but I I was looking for stuff to do when I first moved here to Knoxville by way of space. Mm-hmm. You know? This, the Knoxville of outer space. Well, they're out of space, by the way. Oh, man, uh, yeah, I'm sure the flight was was uh, long. Long, um, but um, like right when I moved, there was this weird like bar professional wrestling event. So I'm like, all right, I'll check this out, and it was really weird and really awesome. So like now I'm going to like another another event here in Knoxville next week that's Waffle House themed. Okay, and so like it's, I think I might I might slowly be be becoming an indie professional wrestling fan, but. Uh, that has nothing to do with like your uh, or sort of I don't know maybe maybe we'll all come up with uh, a gimmick and signature moves and I'll make a ring and we can have the lighter hawk uh, wrestle fest. Yeah, it actually kind of makes me think a oh, little. Well, so, um, and I'm sorry if this is bringing up any names potentially that there may have been yeah. any riffs. I, I'm really not too sure, but um, I know I did bring up when I talked to you the last time a few years ago, um, Angel Metro. Yeah. And so she's actually been doing deathmatch wrestling yeah. for a while now. And she doesn't really come anywhere near me, you know, but she's one that, like, I would love to be able to go see, you know, because I, totally. I learned of her. She was playing keys for an empathy test for with aesthetic perfection. And that's, and then it just kind of, like, that's how it segued and then, like, got to kind of follow her journey mm-hmm. a little, you know. So, I mean, there's... Well, she she know. actually just had a match with uh, Nikki XS. Uh, the Versace of violence. She's like, a, <laughs> like, like, like the like a pro wrestling runway model, who was one of the 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 wrestlers who I saw at the the no ring bar thing. Uh-huh. And so it was like, whoa, world's clay, wow. right? Um, so yeah, that would be that would be that would be cool. I would I would love to see her see her in a match. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, I've noticed it seems. From what I've seen, anyways, um, doing more uh, gasoline vertebrae, of course. Yeah. Any plans for working on more of the gospel side, or just kind of taking it all as it comes, you know? Yeah, I, 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 I made a post or a tweet or whatever you call them now I, I in the X world <laughs> um, that I am not icon of coiling the gothicals and. Uh, that's exactly what happened. Um, I put out the Lost Gothicle song. Um, so there was sort of one last Gothicles track that came out um, called Go Go Jerboa. 
um, which I started with a band that doesn't like me anymore. Uh, so then we just uh, put that out. Um, and the, I will say, like, the, this, uh, I'll, 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 um, I'll give the, the punchline first. There's probably a Gothicals gig coming up. I hope. I'm having. A, I'm not trying to be coy. It's just yeah, like yeah. It's, uh, I'm not. I'm not sure if I can announce it yet. <clears throat> but uh, so the Gothicals, I don't think can ever really go away. Like for me, at least, just mm-hmm. it's sort of like woven into my DNA now. But. Um, it requires this kind of substrate of happiness mm-hmm. that's like really not there for me right yeah, now. Yeah. So it would, it, it, um, like, 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 like it might like cognitively just, just sort of like antiseptically looking at it from the, uh, a bird's eye view to mix my metaphors. Uh, there will probably be another Gothicals album, mm-hmm. but like uh, emotionally, you know, from, from my heart or whatever, like brain versus heart. <laughs> just not, not right now. I'm it's just not, not feeling it. Like I don't foresee it. Like, I mean, I think it would just be the worst thing if I was like, well, people like this and I want some money. So, yeah. I'll flip through an animal encyclopedia, billabongs, ah, you know, or, uh, elephants, you know, just uh, it just just going through the motions of it without being excited about it. And yeah, this this gasoline thing is like that's 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 where my 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 heart is right now. So mm-hmm. um, just sent the next gothic gospels. Just the, the next uh, Gaslight album to the master, so we'll probably be kickstarting that. Um, hopefully, crowdfunding is still cool, uh, but uh, yeah, I think I think we're going to be kickstarting that. So really soon here, hopefully. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Because actually, if memory serves, the um, <clears throat> Animal Songs was the last Kickstarter anything that I yeah. What, what do you call it? Pledge or whatever? Yeah, thank you. And that's been, yeah, how long? That's oh, three, four, four years. years, something like that. Yeah, it was 2020. Yeah, I mean, I know I'm personally apprehensive about Kickstarter. I know I've seen you post a few things where you've pledged on something, and then years later, uh, they they never sent. They said they were going to, or yeah. it's just it's way delayed, you know. So I am extremely selective when it comes to, you know, things like that. But I've obviously been listening to your stuff for so long, and I was like, well, yeah, I'm gonna oh, try to get this going, and I mean, really, that's technically why I was able to do the reverse space count. Yes, because of the uh, the tier, the level that I was on, you know. And then, um, as he had pointed out, it didn't click right away. Um, where actually it was in the campaign itself tier, but you know, animal yeah. songs, German, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I believe you did you did list that in there, and then I was kind of like, oh shit, uh, uh, you know. I I'm yeah. not laughing at my own joke. I forgot I did. Yeah. That. <laughs> um nice well thank you again but yeah that was that was four years ago and um so like yeah i i'm apprehensive uh that the 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 bloom is off a sort of cultural rose of kickstarting like is this just not a cool thing to do anymore mm-hmm. like i don't know like like patreon or Substack or locals or any of that sort of that might even be in the rearview mirror. I'm just not sure what's cool anymore. Um, but um, I don't know if I can uh, commit right now to to like a subscription service like locals. Maybe, maybe it's not. It's not un, unfathomable, but uh, I don't know. I'm just I I, I I think I think I'm ready to go down the Kickstarter path once more with this with this new album. 
we'll see. This shit's expensive, so. Yeah, see, I don't know any of that back end of it. Yeah. Know how, uh, you know. So, look, I put out, I put out Crash and Burn and Burn and Burn and Burn and Burn and Burn and Burn. Um, the last Gaston album, not that long ago. So, yeah, it's just what, it was, it was just a month or two ago, and that's pay what you want. So, this next Gaston album will probably. This Kickstarter will probably start. I don't know September at the earliest. Like I don't want to burn people. Yeah, out. yeah. Um. So so we'll see. But I've put out enough free stuff uh, for gas that uh, it's like I I I think there's enough room in here for for a crowdfunding campaign sort of emotionally mm-hmm. and uh we'll see how it goes man because <laughs> because you know now that my my audience is so polarized it's it's you know of course the the way the kickstarter game works is if you don't um meet the yeah, all or nothing, yeah. It's all or nothing but uh i, I don't know i kind of like the the gamification of that too yeah, puts a little, yeah. Puts a little uh, fire under your feet. Yeah, that's. I mean, I see how close it it gets with a lot of those Kickstarters, <laughs> and then it's just like, I, I don't know. Like, I think I'd be a, too much of a ball of nerves. Like, <laughs> I just like, is it gonna meet goal? Is it gonna meet goal? Yeah. You know, like I started two days ago. Ah, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I mean, I've been. Well, it's an interesting it's an interesting point you bring up because I've been so lucky um, and and I'll just say blessed, I guess is the word that um, the previous all the previous Kickstarters uh, have been funded in like an hour. Have like they been that like three hours wow. for for me? Yeah. Um, but now that it's like you know. I somehow turned into this controversial figure. It's like, I don't know if it's going to work out, but uh, it's a fun experiment. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So then um, any of the other side stuff, I want to say I saw that um, you had posted. It was either a, a remix or something, or maybe it was a new song, and I'm just a terrible person with bad memory Stop. for um, Hardcore Pong. Oh. So any, like, because I, I mean, I know that's a... It's not quite as gothical territory uh-huh. as far as like the little zany or little whatever, but it leans more there, obviously, than yeah. gasoline does. So, I mean, have you been in talks with um, with Carl? You know, working a little more well, on that I, at all, or just kind of seeing how it goes? Or it was a little bit of a joke. Um, what it, it's a gasoline and bourbon remix of uh, Angel's Bed song. Okay, so my my joke was hardcore punk. Yeah, is yeah. Back. Um, for the listener, Hardcore Pong is the the side project that I did with Angel Spit, which is like really nuts. And uh, he's like, bro, I write about whatever you want. I'm like, you shouldn't tell me that because it's like now <laughs> there's songs about like colon health and shit on um, there. Like I, I just went crazy, like because it was you know Angel Spit music, and you know now write about whatever the hell you can come up with. So I was just like a kid in a candy shop. And uh, <clears throat> I brought it up enough. Like people are like, Brian, when's Hardcore Pong coming back? And I'm like, I would like to know too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'll float it to uh, to Carl, to to Big K. He's like, yeah, I'll do and uh, he's doing a lot with his new thing, Ice Planet 9000, um, which I'm, I'm really excited about. So, uh, Hardcore Pong is not back, um, <laughs> even though I want it to be. But the closest we've come in years is the Gothicals remix of Angel Spitz. This game is stupid. So check that out. Now on Spotify. Yeah. So, um, oh, man. I mean, I, I wish I was slightly more prepared. To just oh no, it, that's fine. Like we can just, just yeah, man, yeah. Uh, the the 
it was like a really cool of, of Carl to to let me do that that remix. Like um, when I when I was in, when when the shit initially went down. Um, well, I shouldn't say initially because there's so many phases of my my descent um because i had this like a horrible nightmarish divorce and i lost a lot of like my friend base with that and then then i uh this bullshit bullshit uh internet uh uh the is there a word for like when the villagers come after Frankenstein with the pitchforks and the torches. Um, that's sort of what was in my head. Um, but what, whatever that, that, that attack is after I had Jess, AKA uh, waifu Kron now, mm -hmm. who now goes by Moxie Dame um, on, uh, I just, I can, like, and, like, I just got just destroyed, like, yeah, just destroyed um, on online, and uh, it was really, really awful. I, like, I completely flipped out, you know, and um, Carl had me over. I went, I flew out to L.A. Mm. <clears throat> I guess that's where he is now, right? That's where yeah. he is now <clears throat> from, I was in Boston at the time, and it was just, like, I couldn't tell like what direction was up. Like I was, I was really messed up. And he hosted me for a week just to like chill out. And then, you know, once again, people started going after him mm -hmm. just because he was preventing his friend from fucking killing himself. Like what a horrible person, right? And uh, and. So even even with that uh, uh, history of of being attacked for just being associated with me, the fact that he would um, not only have me then remix him, but like have my face like is the sort of the cover art mm -hmm. of the song, and like just really be just not hide it in any way. Because I've done I've done remixes for people since then. And been like, all right, because there's that wonderful day when you you finish the remix and you turn it in, you know, mm -hmm. like when you're turning in a paper in high school or something, and it's like, all right, I did it here, like tell me, I'm a good boy, and they're like, yeah, dude, this is fucking great. I'll release this when things are less hot. Like, fuck you, man. Like, like I just, you know, you asked me to do the thing, and I did the thing, and like, okay, and we're still cool, but I'll just be your secret friend. And, um, uh, but not with where I'm going with it, not with, uh, not with Carl. So, uh, I, I, I just have worlds of respect for, for him for, for doing that. Um, and I'm happy with the way the song turned out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so check that out. I don't. I don't think I have any remixes I need to do now. Um, I always have a couple. Uh, I am. We we decided on a name, and I won't. I won't. I, I'm because like um, I finished this uh, the this gasoline album I was mm -hmm. yapping about before, and it's, I sent it to the the guy who's mastering it. And that's really exciting. And then there's this this big like, yay, I'm done. Like now what? And um, the timing on it was perfect because a another artist uh, whose name will be revealed. I'm not gonna say it here, but um, uh, I was like, hey, I've got all these songs. Do you want to try to come up with like some lyrics for them? And I'm like, yeah. And so, like, well, now we're four tracks into yet another collab. Um, I'm really excited about it. I think we settled on a name. And 
that should be out soon on Liger Hawk Records. Uh, so that I'm really excited about. Uh, I think I think that's like because uh, we got all the songs done, so like. There might be an EP out for a new collab, and then it's just back into to music yeah. for gasoline. Like, I I don't know. I can't really like watch a movie these days. Like, I get bored so quickly. Like, joy is so fleeting. Not to be all emo about it. Like, the only thing I can really concentrate on for more than ten minutes is is doing <laughs> industrial music. So. Uh, there might be there might be another gasoline yet another gasoline album not too far off but we'll see but as far as that goes with the the drive and all of that if you will not necessarily freak drive hey, but maybe in this case, look at you um, thanks bro uh like while it's there just just keep working on you it you got it you know? yeah and that's with anything you know like yeah I, if I try to think of stupid you know memes or reels or something let me make this like oh I've got a few good ideas let me do it before they're gone or like, um, I'll even very rarely write poetry, oh. but it's like when it's there, yeah. it's like I've got to try to start on it, capitalize on it, because That's... it can go months, sometimes years in between getting that proper spark, at least for me, for certain things, you know? No, I know it's a little different for something that you've been in for so long, and it's more or less kind of ingrained in a sense, you know, but like, yeah, when, when it's there, just strike and, you know, put some stuff out, even if you got to sit it on the shelf for a little while and kind of stagger it, you know, that never hurts. I don't think. No, but, um, yeah. So, uh, that ad there, uh, I do apologize. But that was super seven. Oh uh, yeah. So, was... I want to say, was there a, a convention or something or just a, um, some kind of something that you went to recently? I believe yeah. I saw with some of your, your figures and whatnot, or was yeah, that down here? So I know like... you went to some of them up, uh, up in Boston and whatnot, but yeah, I had a, um, it's it was it was cool like um uh uh i had this you know to a distant second after my marriage and friend base but one of my coolest um sort of sort of social things in boston was the boston area toy collectors club mm-hmm. like i just i just was like Google the one night. I wonder if there's a toy collecting club in Boston, and um, it just works out so well for me. And it was basically adult show and tell. Yeah. But uh, it was like I look forward to it every month, and um, I was like, "Fuck!" Uh, when I had to move, because it's like I really like my whole life is falling apart here in Boston, and people that I lived with at the time like want to fucking kill me and like so like there's there's no um uh 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 question about having to move like I gotta move but I don't want to miss the, the toy collecting club and like the weekend that I moved here to Knoxville there was a convention across the street mm-hmm. like you saw the big yellow ball on a stick yeah, that, yeah. that's where all the conventions are and it was this anime slash toy convention. So I was like, oh, okay, it's kind of worked out. Like, um, this this place that I'm in now is actually a second choice. And like I said, when we were walking up, and, um, you know, not only is the, the view from here far superior, uh, there was, like, this convention across the street, like, the weekend I moved in. And then there was, because oh, it's, like, where all the cons and stuff mm-hmm. are, uh, there was a video game tattoo convention. Oh, that's right. And then you did get... Yeah, I got... Right? Yeah, it, yeah. It's, um, that was just, what, a week or two ago? That was... After. I'll see if I can get it on the... Uh, it's the, the tentacle from... Um, uh, well, one of the two tentacles from... The Nintendo version of Maniac Mansion. It shows up in a couple of different consoles. Okay. But, um, yes, I am now finally... Uh, video game lead be tentacled. I uh, just like because uh, they just had some they had guys like on hand, and uh, I was able to find one person 
uh, an artist in Knoxville. That's, mm-hmm. People would come in from all over, and I was like, "Well, if I'm gonna get something, and I want to have like an amazing piece done by somebody in Tampa, Florida, and then yeah. have to, like fly it out of Tampa." Oh, I suppose. Well, but then the you can thing. visit because I'm only about oh, okay. I have myself. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, the the guy <laughs> find I just ended up. He was he's new in town, and like myself, just down the street. So it ended up just working out really well. Um, that was a great convention, though, man. It's like while I'm waiting for the guy to set up and digitize the thing on his iPad and all, uh, there was like an old school arcade. So I'm like, oh, all right, okay. I'll just rock some dark stalkers. Well, ah, it's so cool. And um, let's see, Creepy Con, the horror convention. Um, I've obviously never been to it, but that's coming up in like September or August and um, that's that's supposed to be the shit like that's yeah that's like that's where all the the, the Knoxville uh, 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 creepy kids just just go full bore supposedly well, so we'll check it out now here's yeah, right? yeah yeah it's almost July wow yeah yeah right like yeah. I, I got to do something summer-ish before it's gone, right? <laughs> Other than be outside and in the heat. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, you kind of can't, es- can't escape it. I've, I've never worn shorts so much in my life. Yeah. Um, but um, it's, it's pretty awesome. Like, I mean, obviously you get summer in Boston or Chicago, other places where I've lived, but... Um, it's this fleeting grass thing. Yeah. Like, the sun's out today. What is going on now? Uh, but uh, it's it's uh, a little bit more of a constant heat here in in the south. I live in the south. Now. Yeah. And did you ever think you'd be able <laughs> to say that? Probably not. In a billion years. In a billion years. Like I am. I'm so Midwest. Like mm-hmm. in my in my like. DNA to use that word again that um, uh, I was like I, I couldn't fathom living in Boston um, when I moved I'd never been there before I moved mm-hmm. and I, I really fell in love with it and just like like a complete Tony I was trying I was trying to like slowly recon myself into a Boston I'd be like I, I remember the first day I said horrible instead of horrible like, oh it's happening it's like, <laughs> yeah like i didn't go like full pot of god how my god that's just like silly but like i was i was it was every now and then like uh there was like a little tongue thrust on a t like uh you made it you can you made it like yeah and i was i was i was like working it in like a little bit and uh uh now now i've got to like you know like multi-classing a, a druid and a fighter mm. like i put all these levels into druid now i gotta start working on, on a fighter for the south i guess like um I, I i i'm not gonna drop a y'all or anything i don't know tennessee's weird because it's it, or maybe it's just knoxville um by which i mean like cause a lot of people like me are moving mm-hmm. um to 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 tennessee cause, like the taxes are like crazy low. Um, like I'm looking at my paychecks from work, going like, "Okay, more action figures as well." Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, so this is such a rambling thing, but it's it's interesting because um, uh, like if, if you watch like you know whatever Black Mass or or any of those gangster movies. They would have you believe that everybody in Boston has the the full bore mm-hmm. Southie accent, and it's like one out of every twelve. Like it's yeah. it's rare, but when it's there, it's all the way. It's like zero to yeah, ten. There's no in between. There's no yeah. in between. Um, and you're like, uh, I'm sorry, what? Like, it, like it's, it's like a really. It's it's like a full bore accent, and it's kind of that way here mm-hmm. with, with the southern accent. Like I'll just you know I have my gen, what I would call a generic American accent, and you know you know buying like burrito or whatever. Thank you. 
It's fine. Like I don't notice it. And then every now and then, where are you from? Like, oh, full board. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, they do that here. All right. All right. And what's that, actually that was making me think of, um, I, I didn't even know that certain terms were uh, New England until seeing like reels and stuff. So my, my stepdad, he's from Buzzards Bay, you know, pretty close to the Boston area. You know, okay. Like and um, I just picked up a few, like the, the one that I didn't make any connection to. I saw like reels, jokes about stuff like that. Bang a Yui. Uh, I just thought that was more like a <laughs> universal thing. I just assumed, you know. So then when I see stuff like making jokes about the people, oh yeah, you know, bang a Yui. I was like, yeah, that's, that's just a Yui. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I didn't even know that was more like a, apparently a regional yeah. term, I guess. I, I have no idea. And what was funny too is, um, I remember my, my grandmother, uh, she, of course, she had the pretty thick accent. Okay. And I didn't know that she was talking about Pita, as in like P-I-T-A, bread. I thought she was saying Peter because of her accent. So she was like, well, yeah, I'm going to up some pita bread. So I was like, oh, I've never heard of that brand. But okay, cool. You know, what are we having for dinner? You know, and it just, because I was relatively, I mean, I say relatively young. I was probably like 13, 14, uh, you know, but I just, I thought she was just saying Peter bread. And I'm Peter like, what bread. the hell? I don't know what brand that is or whatever, but hey, if it's good, cool. You know, but no, uh, she was straight pita bread. That's know? funny. <laughs> No. Uh, <laughs> stuff like that from know. the makers of Paul bread and yeah. Mary bread <laughs> comes Peter bread <laughs> it's gonna make me laugh it's gonna make me laugh all day okay cool man <laughs> the, yeah, I haven't really noticed too much too cultural hats are back and people, nobody wore hats in Boston and uh, hats are rather popular uh among dudes, at least here in, 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 in Knoxville. Um, still trying to get a gig. That's tough. That's, that's proving difficult. Um, I think I have this gospel gig. And uh, one venue actually got back to me about gasoline. Otherwise, it's been, it's been pretty tough. <laughs> I got let go from um, this year's Mechanismus. And that's going to be next week. And that's going to be... That's going to be fun to be like scrolling through pictures. Yeah, of like, oh, hey. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like fun. But, uh, you know, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. And then, I mean, what I think is crazy in some ways, too, is because, I mean, you've, of course, been probably in Chicago most of the time that I've you know, known of you, music, yeah. all of that. And I know that traveling and, of course, even just getting gigs in general can be tough. It's like, there's no way in hell that he's ever going to come down here. I'm never going to hear <laughs> I'm gonna whatever. And I um, remember seeing you post up doing, you were doing, like, just side little random gigs, uh, DJ Fishstick. <laughs> and I was so tempted to try to get some of my friends and be like, look, let's just Try to get some money together. Yeah. We'll talk to some bar here. See yeah. if they hook up. Let's get DJ Fishdick in. They're like, what the fuck is that? And it obviously never happened. But that yeah, was one of those. Right. I told myself that like if I ever got enough money, the two people that I would have wanted to bring down. So I, I have seen Voltaire once, uh -huh. but he was one of them. That it's like if I got enough money, I would just pay to just uh -huh. fly him down and do like a personal show or something. You know what I mean? And then you would have been like the other. Oh, one, thanks. Man. You know, but I don't even play a lot of them. So I mean, but the thoughts there, right? They, they count, or so they say. He'll do it. I know. saw him do a show <laughs> um, at a private, a private-ish show at a local brewery mm -hmm. um, for my buddy's birthday. Kind of. I mean, it was like a, an inaugural. He was kicking off, I think, some new beer because he was the owner of this brewery and. I uh, brought in Voltaire and, uh, you know, crushed, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I remember that uh, that first, and hopefully it won't be the only time I've seen him. So I was there early because I never know the parking situations anywhere, <laughs> you know. And I was still with my ex-wife, and the only people there were us, the owner of the bar, and then Voltaire. And he's helping, like, move stuff around, set things up and all that, and I'm standing there all like, and, like, I wanted to say something, yeah. but I'm like, no, he's helping, he's busy, whatever. So I'm just standing there. I was, like, pretty much fangirling, you know, uh, just like, I, I want to say something. I was like, oh, my God, that's, that's him. I can't believe it, you know? Yeah. And it's just, oh, man. But, yeah, I, I definitely love his music. It's a lot of fun, too. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm really, I'm pretty friendly with him. I was gonna uh, say, I know. Uh, was, wasn't there a um, like some like Gothic cruise or something? I think you went we on y'all were I, you posted something just kind of witty banter. Y'all were just hanging out and just going back. Oh, uh, great! Uh, yeah, he um, because like you know we're both so corny that like we the first time we were. Uh, privileged enough to do the goth cruise. Like we were the, like I never had um, you know a house band on a cruise uh, on my bingo card of life, <laughs> and um, so the it was the Gothicals and Stoneburner that year, and Voltaire just showed up. Yeah, like he just showed up, and uh, we're like. Clearly, that's him. Like nobody right. else looks like that guy, but Voltaire, and he, you know, he ended up being one of the artists because it's like, what are you going to not have him perform? Right. Um, and uh, so we, you know, there was the artist's table that year, by which I mean dining table. Like all the the plebeians ate at their own table, so those <laughs> fancy artists ate at our own table, which was like. Kind of weird because, like, all the they're our friends anyway. Like, the people yeah. on the crew, so it's like, uh, you went over there, guy. Well, we'll no. catch up later. Yeah, I mean, no. Yeah, or we, yeah, obviously, because it's like your name's Darren. Like, we've known each other for twenty years. Like, yeah. I, you know. But uh, where I'm going with it is like we're both so corny, uh, Voltaire, and I, we would just get into these like pun battles and mm-hmm. like one-liner battles, and it was. It was awesome, and uh, even at that brewery show in, I forget the name of the town, Boston, essentially, but like, you know, an hour and a half outside mm-hmm. of Boston, he was just like playing, and then in between songs, he was, motherfucker, the gossicals are here, and, like, ah. <laughs> and he's coming to Knoxville, and um, I'm going to go, but like, I don't know if he can now publicly acknowledge that we're friends, because I'm so radioactive, but uh, we'll see what happens. Wow. Hopefully, it didn't. Uh, <laughs> I didn't start anything with that. Then. Oh um, no! <laughs> like I, I mean, I'm sure he doesn't give a shit, but like, because he's a cool guy. But uh, it's just, it's, it is weird to like have to start every internet conversation with like, you know, person X, like who's ever there. Like, I, I don't know where we're at. Like, do you think I'm a Nazi or not? Like, it's a weird starting point to kind of establish and then mm-hmm. okay now we can talk about you know whatever uh the remix that you want or or if you want to come on space couch or whatever the conversation yeah, is yeah it's just like it's it's i have to dip my big toe into like yeah, okay cool yeah. um but uh yeah you know i guess that's my life now but uh, I still get to have wonderful people on Space Couch and our first in-studio guests. So, you know, there's uh, all directions are up when you're in space. Hey. (laughs) All right. Well, I mean, I don't know if I really have... It feels like like we should bring this flying couch back on into the station. Um, So let me... It was reverse Space Couch, but I will will take uh, control... um, of the dial once more because this is Brian for Space Couch for Phil for Reverse Space Couch. Um, what did we learn today? Uh, I don't know. Normally I have questions here and I can do a summary. We went over um, the status of Hardcore Pong. Uh, you got a preview of look for the upcoming gasoline album uh we've got some guest stars on that it's at the master right now it's being mastered by a very famous guy um i'm still looking for gigs uh i will compress the rest of it to just say shit's still kind of fucked up for me right now um but you and i are gonna go get some lunch so that's cool so uh oh yeah go to go to um super7.com slash space couch show. Uh they just put out the the new wave of Thundercats uh ultimates. So look, I'm at least gonna get the verbal. Uh, it's, it's gonna be awesome. And check I will be at CreepyCon actually. 
helping my friend Grim Life out in the booth. So look for that if you go to CreepyCon. Other than that, uh, call the spaceships to Davenport. Prepare for Divanarchy and interface. With a couch in space, space couch out. Let that, let that do its thing. This is where the, uh, put, put brakes on pretty much after everything. Uh, yeah. Break down and, you know. Well,